Horizon every day. What's going on beautiful bees? It has been way too long since I've done a video and I can tell you guys that I have never been so busy in my entire life. Um, you guys know I moved so that was a whole ordeal and um, now I'm just getting myself settled in where I'm at. Um, I'm gonna have an update on my garden so stay tuned for that. Planting a lot, a lot of trees, plum trees, apple tree, uh, grapevine. I have four vines right now. It's what I've been eating right now. Still eating whole fresh food and I missed you guys so uh, thank you so much for your patience. I want to at least try to do a video once a week um, but studying nutrition and tending to the garden all of that has taken up a lot of my time and I want to just share with you the latest of what I've been learning when it comes to building. We've talked about detoxification the importance of that uh, but we want to look at building and amino acids and it's not all yin, it's not all yang, it's about homeostasis and taking someone like myself who's had high acidity, high toxicity with lots of alcohol and coffee and whatnot and bringing the body back into a balanced state with nutrition and lifestyle. So what we're going to talk about today is amino acids. Some people are having a hard time with absorption and one thing I have learned and continue to learn is that we are all unique and are different biochemically. My personal opinion is it also has to do with our microbes and our microbiome and where we live. Of course environment plays a factor. Um, I try to eat locally as possible and um, and when it comes to amino acids it's especially important for vegetarians to make sure they are make to make sure that they are getting a wide variety of amino acids through their diet and um, I'm gonna cover that there's what I've been learning is there's uh, two ways of measuring uh, pro protein quality and it's also about what you're absorbing and this is more of a building phase as opposed to detoxification which I've done a lot of already so now I'm just looking at maintenance. In studying nutrition I keep referring back to this book Staying Healthy with Nutrition by Dr. Elson. One of the best books I would say I've ever read because it is so comprehensive it goes over all the different types of diets, the pros and cons of each, and how it's really important just to eat a wide variety of foods. Here he talks about what happens if an amino acid is deficient in our diet. Under this circumstance, the body will continue to make proteins. Most amino acids necessary to make the proteins will be available from existing cellular supplies. But the deficient amino acid will not. Instead of being able to obtain this deficient amino acid from existing supplies, the body will have to break down muscle proteins to obtain it. If over a period of one or two days we consume all of the necessary amino acids by eating a balanced and complete selection of protein-containing foods, these muscle proteins will be replaced. If not, we will experience net protein loss. And thus the importance of consuming all the amino acids through a daily intake of 60 grams of balanced protein in forms that are easily digested and assimilated. Many, many methods have been devised to measure the quality of protein foods. Some of these look at the food alone before it has been eaten and digested within the body. Other methods look at both the food and its interaction with the body. He believes that there are interactive measures to give a true picture of protein quality. He looks at two measurements. The first is biological value, which is the measurement of protein, and looks at the amount of nitrogen that is released from the protein and absorbed into the body. Nitrogen is a great indicator of protein status because it's not found in the other two macronutrients, carbohydrates and fats. The second measurement is called net protein utilization, which is measured in exactly the same way as biological value, except that in addition to looking at the percentage of absorbable nitrogen, the NPU also looks at the digestibility of the food proteins. The digestibility of the eggs, milks, meats, and cheese, for example, is scored at 100 on the NPU scales. 
so is that a peanut butter. For corn, however, the number is 89, and for beans, 82. Remember that these numbers are not based on actual protein content in the food, but on how readily the foods are digested and how efficiently the body can use the proteins. The lower digestibility of certain protein-containing foods does not mean we should not eat them. It means that we should take steps to improve their digestibility or use the pr principles of protein combining to ensure adequate amino acid variety. So, you know, com properly combining certain foods for proper digestibility. He says that protein requirements are also based on protein quality as measured by BV. Protein is also measured by the way it supports growth. The measurement called protein efficiency ratio is determined by feeding an animal a particular protein food and measuring its growth. The reference protein for determining the BV of foods is that of eggs the food with the highest BV at 94%, although mother's milk is valued at 100%. Next are fish at 75 to 90%, whole grain rice at 86%, legumes at 58 to 73%, and meats and poultry at 75 to 85%. Corn, a less complete protein than some of the others mentioned here, has a BV of approximately 60%. For me, uh, what I've been noticing is not everyone is doing well on 100% plant-based. Adding in a little bit of fish, a little bit of, whether it's egg whites, really helps them out, especially on top of a leafy green salad. And that way we know they're getting their B12. We know they're meeting their amino acid requirements and it's absorbing in their body, super important. So I am, of course, for human health, animal health, uh, as you guys know, uh, my cat now is doing super well on pickerel and uh, my cat has been my first uh, animal case study that is my teacher showing me that it's important to not just have a boxed in belief system and to try different things to see what works for that individual or that body's health. And as I'm learning, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys. And so stay tuned and as always, be your beautiful selves. Be getting in some whole, fresh, healthy food, some nature, some sunshine. When you do that, we'll all be rising.